What's up, YouTube? So I didn't get a chance to go to the primary election debate tonight, or yesterday, I should say. But I did do some research on it, and uh, from what I can gather from the Star Tribune, Matt Mead just dug himself into a deeper hole. He seemed behind the times and jumping to name-calling. Senator Gozer, on the other hand, wanted to expand health, um, cheaper health care for about 17,000, yes, 17,500 low-income Wyoming citizens. And um, Senator Gozer also believes in the same-sex marriage, saying we should legalize it. So, I mean, he's got my vote because, you know, he wants to legalize marijuana, I'm sure, for the um, gay community in Casper and all through Wyoming. You know, wouldn't that be nice to be able to marry your significant other legally without having to go to some other state to do it? I mean, and this guy also wants equal pay for both sexes. Gozer does. So, and he also wants to preserve our wildlife. For game and fish enthusiasts, Matt Mead wants to drill for oil out of Yellowstone Park. And Matt Mead does not believe in marijuana legalization or gay rights, for that matter. And again, you know, you're entitled to vote for whoever you want to vote for, but you might want to learn the facts before you make your final vote, huh? Because uh, if you want to have... And that's just the thing, man. This is what disgusts me about our country, you know? Me personally, it's, oh, you have Asperger's and you choose to medicate yourself with marijuana. Society might judge you for it. For some other people, you know, society says it's trying to dictate who you can love as a person. I mean, love is a pretty powerful thing, man. I mean, there's times when it's complete horseshit, but love and hatred are equal on power level because you've seen what love can do to a world. You can, you, we've seen what hatred can do to a world. But, uh, that's something to think about. Check out this, uh, badass mask I got for my Halloween costume. It's an invisible face mask, basically. Pretty, uh, pretty cool looking. It'll, uh, match the, uh, green robe I'm getting for it nicely. And the cool thing about an invisible face mask like this is it works. Most masks I can't wear because of my glasses, and it's kind of hard to see without them, so... You know, it just makes that Halloween and all that much safer because I'm able to see what I'm doing. There's a good possibility I could get contacts, but right now I'm comfortable just wearing glasses. And this mask works because it doesn't scrunch up my glasses, see? And because it's mesh, I can actually smoke cigarettes through it and still drink and get drunk and you know, have a good time on Halloween like I always do. So, But uh, yeah, that's a cool looking mask. I'm show you, show you something here. And oh yes, the cigarette smoke's getting... So, to neutralize some of that odoring out the nice smoker's candle lit. It's not a small fire on my futon. <laughs> yeah, because commenters are a real joy on YouTube, I tell you what. But as a celebrity, I'm getting ripped on, but not nearly as bad as some of the celebrities these days. And it's weird because... Our fucked up society likes to hold celebrities to a higher standard, which is complete horseshit because celebrities are normal people too. Amanda Bynes gets caught with marijuana and wreaking havoc and stealing and all this other shit. The Central Mental Hospital. Oh, great. Now, marijuana's gonna get a bad name. It's not Amanda Bynes' fault, really. I think she's just, you know, marijuana's not for everyone, obviously. But. Huh? How badass is that? You don't see the face, you see a black screen and you smoke all over. Got this nice long dark green hooded robe with black on the inside. Fill the green over with this black, tuck this part in, to the stuff underneath the hood and into the robe nice and neat. So, yeah, I got a badass costume for Halloween this year and the nice thing about the robe I'm getting is that I can use it for rituals if I need to, so then just wearing it for Halloween, obviously, so it's convenient. Yeah, 
In some areas of the country, there's no work. The economy is just dead. Marijuana legalization brings out a lot of money for your state and a lot of tourism. I mean, look how successful Colorado is. Think about it. Crime's gone down in Colorado since legalization. So again, do some research on your candidates before you go off criticizing them. Um, it's my obvious voice for Gozer because, hey, you know, people deserve to have rights too. Yet, if you choose a medicine that the pharmaceutical company hasn't approved of, you know, the mass of the society is going to judge you for it and have this negative association of it. And it's horseshit. Now, my argument for this has been if you're going to smoke weed, you got to be responsible with it, which means, you know, be responsible with it. It's just like alcohol in that aspect, really. And uh, society and times are definitely changing. They're becoming more accepting of homosexuality and marijuana, which I think is great. It shows how open-minded and mature our society has a chance to be. I mean, I don't know why the fuck you're hating on homosexuality. Maybe some of you haven't seen a good lesbian porn in a while, huh? <laughs> uh, that's horrible, but... Yeah. People say it's an abomination. It's the same. That's a complete little horse crap. I mean, I'm a socially awkward artistic, so I... I do get some... I do get some ridicule from society to an extent, but not nearly as bad as what history has done to, you know... So... Should it happen to begin with? No. Discrimination of any kind shouldn't happen to begin with, but unfortunately that's life, you know. And it's like I said, you legalize it, the money you make out of it, divide it into six sectors and just share the wealth. A country could really benefit from that kind of thing. It's not just me saying it either. But being as I do care somewhat about politics, I figured hey, I'm a young voter. I have the right to know. Election day is November 4th. That's next month. So, I'm most definitely voting for Senator Gozer. I uh, about the rest of Wyoming, but... And the thing of it is, though, most people don't want marijuana legalized because they're afraid of kids getting easier access to it. Well, how many people that you know deal it check for ID? At least with a dispensary, they check for your ID. If you're under 18, they check to see if you have a recommendation from your doctor. And if you don't, then, you can, then they don't recommendationally sell it to you. Some states are 21, some states are 18. Me, personally, I think if you're old enough to die and vote for our country and vote for the politicians that govern the state, I think you're old enough to smoke a little bit of weed. That's just my opinion. But how is it that they neglect to tell you the simple facts in school, like our founding fathers find they drafted the Constitution on hemp paper at a bar drinking, smoking tobacco and weed? Yeah. These are things they don't tell you. And here's the thing tobacco before the cigarette companies got a hold of it is actually an herb and it's used to pull infections from your body but then you add the crap ton of nasty chemicals to it and that makes it addicting then tobacco gets its bad name as a, as a killer so to speak but no they don't tell you these facts because they want you to know they want you to believe and think that marijuana is a gateway drug at least all kinds of horrible things when 34th Street is telling me it cures cancer, yeah, I've been through this few a hundred times already. I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point. For those of you who were there at the election tonight at the Casper College, you saw the obvious proof of what I've been saying all along. You know, if you're old enough to vote, get out there and make it, make it, make a choice. You know, you want to see great change come to your state, 
make a difference in the primary elections by voting. You think your voice doesn't make a difference. Well, that's horseshit, okay? In all sincerity, not all countries have the right we have to vote for our leaders. Some countries are just forced to take whatever leader they're given. And if you don't like it, tough shit. So, we still have that freedom in America, and that's something to be grateful for. So, like I said, primary elections are November, November, no, don't twist it, I put a lot of coffee to drink, November 4th, so, I find out where I, I registered to vote, and I'm going to exercise my goddamn right, and I'm voting for Gozer, and I'm going to make a difference, because if Gozer gets elected for governor, hoo-hoo, oh, uh, it turns out, I didn't know this, but Matt Meek is going for re-election, which means he's already governor of Casper and entire Wyoming, ooh, Hmm. I didn't know this because I don't usually follow up on politics, but I realize that you vote for people who support what you believe in, and you're going to get the results you want because that's how politics works in a nutshell. You want marijuana legalization and gay rights and equal pay for both sexes and preserving of our natural habitat and no drilling in National Yellowstone Park, which is a national monument, mind you, well, then find out the, about the politicians who support what you support and vote for it. So, that's something to think about, isn't it? Not too many people are actually re election, I guess. I should never remember the governor of Wyoming is not that mean. My apologies, I remember it's a woman. And again, I don't have a problem with a woman running for office. I really don't. You know, I know Hillary Clinton's running for office in 2016. I'm, oh, no. No, no, and no. Not because she's a woman, but because she's pro-war. I don't agree with that. Okay? She does, however, because she makes money off the war. Her and her husband are connected to some arms dealers and shit, so when the military goes to war with other countries, they make a shit ton of money. That's how they fund their campaign. It's sick and it's twisted, but then, you know. People like her don't want marijuana legalized because it opened people up to the truth. Just saying. I mean, government officials love making money and having their campaigns funded. You'd think they'd want their campaigns funded with marijuana. They'd make a shit ton more money doing it than the pharmaceutical companies are paying them. And truth be told, the pharmaceutical companies could benefit from it too because, again, splitting that wealth of marijuana into six different categories. The last video I posted gave you a rough estimate of how much we could be making here. By this point, I feel like a broken record here repeating myself. It's mm. last of that pot of coffee. Yeah, I made a pot of coffee earlier and sat back and kicked it, you know, drinking coffee, getting a nice caffeine buzz going. I really don't appreciate comments on the YouTube section saying my apartment looks like shit. I passed my last inspection, thank you very much, so comments like that can go fuck themselves. Look at marijuana legalization from a perspective of job opportunity. There's a lot of stuff that goes into making it. You gotta grow it, you gotta trim it, you gotta roll it, and sell it, you gotta market for it. That opens up a whole lot of jobs. Places, especially where there is no job. Yeah, I'm just repeating myself on it. Because I'm not right on this issue, goddammit. I consider smoking weed my constitutional right. Because the Constitution was drafted out of the hemp paper. In a pub where everyone was drinking. It's smoking tobacco, not the tobacco you see in cigarettes now, but all natural going off their plantation tobacco, right? Now, I understand some white people feeling the need to be gangster. Uh, for whatever reason, they think there's, you know, 
whatever it's your life. However, I would just suggest one thing. If you're going to try to act gangster, even though most people laugh when they see you, don't use the N-word. Use the C-word. Yeah, crack a please instead of N-word please. You know. It doesn't help when we get these stupid statistics on the news and they deliberately point out the statistics of, you know, a lesser minority. And it just focuses, I think, on the issue of race itself and it's bullshit. But that's just my opinion, you know. You get some weird ass study for whatever random reason and then they immediately jump into the statistics of the minority and it's just like oh, fucking hate. Maybe they're not intentionally doing it, but sometimes I feel like that's feeling the race war, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just my opinion. And I think it's unnecessary, but the fuck do I know it's an Aspie hopped up on coffee. But I do like to keep my YouTube fans updated on what's going on. We're working on my sixth album. I just got done um, doing a song from my sixth album called Whiskey Tears for My Dogs. A pretty awesome song. Check it out. The sixth album when it comes out. And some people are going to be a fan of my metal. Some people aren't. You know, it's different. You're not going to hear another sound of metal like it out there. That's what I'm going for, you know. I'm trying to broaden or broaden. There we go. Find the right word. Broaden the variety of metal out there, you know. But being in your paying ten bucks for an artist you've never even heard of. At this point, I'm just using it until I get discovered. And once I get discovered, get a record deal going. I can sit down and write a legit album, get some decent composers behind it, make some kick ass shit. Okay. I'll tell you what, with the ideas, you know, going back and forth and shit like that, I can create some kick ass music, dude. You know, there's no doubt about that, but. There's a good reason why people are reluctant to just hand out record deals these days. I'm not going to say the name, but it's he who must not be named. It's not Lord Voldemort, but it's that douchebag from Canada. Okay, you know who I'm talking about. And naming his name only spreads the fever even more. And you want to avoid that? Avoid using the name completely, even if you're insulting him. The insults are funny, but the truth of it is you're just jealous because he's got more money than you. Keeping it real here. Now, the first step to recovering from the fever is admitting you're jealous that he's getting more pussy and more money than you. How about that song, I Want an MTV? Remember that song? Old ass 80s song. That song's about him. Think about that for a second. Money for nothing and your chicks for free. That's no offense to, you know, homosexuals when I say that, but yeah. You know, and that's just the problem. All this crap going on in the world. ISIS, another war, the economy is in depression. It's just blah, you know. I know that there's still people out there who care for each other and want to be with somebody. You know, that's that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard to believe sometimes. But hey, it's a, it's a nice feeling knowing that there's still some of that out there. Now, granted, I'm gonna keep it real here. Too much love, you become a spineless pussy. You're way too trusting, and you get fucked over real easy. Okay, that's the thing about life. It's like YouTube on that aspect. You know, if you're too trusting, you, there's times people are just gonna fucking take advantage of you, and that shit sucks. You know. But if you're too hating and too, uh, you know, people aren't going to be want, want to be around you. They're going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't trust anyone. You know what I'm saying? So, but sometimes finding that balance is difficult because of the shit going on in our society. But you got to think, our society is obsessed with drama. So that's all these reports on. Our society is not obsessed with drama. You're just full of shit. Am I? Jersey Shore, the hills, the real world, keeping up with the Kardashians, living Lohan. That's just five right there, I named. Reality shows that focus on celebrities and drama and bullshit and drinking and complaining about it. It's a very easy to follow pattern. That's why people watch it because it's predictable. 
you know, at the same time, you don't want to hold celebrities to a higher standard just because they're famous and you're not going to make more money than you do. That's horseshit, man. They're doing a job just like the rest of us. Maybe that job's to entertain us, and for some reason people think that, oh, that means they're better than me. Therefore, we expect more of them. Now, some celebrities can control it, yes, and some of them can't. Some of them do it on purpose because they know their little shit face shenanigans will get them in trouble, it'll get them publicity, that's why you see he who must not be named <clears throat> driving his stupid trike scooter fucking ugly ass, whatever the fuck those things are called, and almost being an old lady egging someone's house. Really? It was just like the nineteen fifties. Oh check this out, we're gonna take a bag of dog shit and lie down on old Matt Jenkins front door, ring the doorbell and run away. Tee hee hee hee. You know, it's funny because I've been getting prank phone calls lately, and the stupid thing of it is, I have caller ID on my phone. So these people are calling me, and they're saying, hey, I work with you at Wendy's. We should, like, hang out. We should give you your address. Caller ID says, Wichita, Kansas. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, I've been getting prank phone calls on and off for the past couple of years, and it's kind of horse shit. I mean, if you're going to prank call me, at least try a little bit harder than that. I'm not going to name names, I'm not going to give the number, because if I did, people who did support me on YouTube would call you fuckers and start harassing you and say, how yeah, you'd like it. But I don't want to take it that far. And I know you watch my videos, I don't know how the fuck you got a hold of my number, but I'm just saying, if I see your fucking number and it's a number I don't recognize, chances are I'm not going to answer it. And the thing of it is, you know, if you do get a hold of my dress and come after me, that's not a good idea. The reason I say that is because Psycho Stalkers can meet my double barrel shotgun. Home defense, biatch. Okay, uh, I don't need birdshot, especially where the. I mean, I don't need buckshot, excuse me. I don't need buckshot, especially for how small this apartment is. For the close range combat, home defense, birdshot will put a hole through you because of the spread. And it, if there's not enough from the spread, ah. The problem with slugs is they go through walls. They leave a hole, but, you know, you don't want that going through a hole and making a bigger hole. You know what I'm saying? It's just common sense. Um, when I got shells, I had no idea what I was buying, but I went into Dick's Sporting Goods and picked out 100 rounds of Winchester Super X um, birdshot here. And uh, it came with four cases, a hundred rounds, came in a big box. I got the other three in my white tub, and this one's underneath my computer desk. Go ahead and open that up. Look at that. That's noise. Again, you don't see me being stupid with my firearm. This is a problem with gun control. It's like sword control, really. I'm sure they debated the same shit in the Middle Ages. This is why we should ban swords, because you're slicing people. But notice that the gun didn't move until I picked it up. Okay, and I know the inside and out of my gun like that. I can take it apart and put it back together like that. Okay, it's easy to check for safety. Just break the barrels open. Oh, look at that, you know. And the first and foremost important rule about guns is treat them as though they are loaded. And I know for a fact that's loaded because, unfortunately, with YouTube, you never know what the crazy assholes out there. And I would hate to have to come to that kind of decision where I have to pop the safety and bust a cap or two, but this is a, a secure building, goddammit, so, yeah. 24 minutes of word vomit. So based off what I read in the Casper Star Tribune online, People are starting to see what I'm saying. Uh, Matt Mead may have a good sense of humor, but it's only going to get him so far. Mm. These are Turkish royal cigarettes. No, speaking of Turkish. You know, I really don't... Um, news outlets for me, TYT... And um, CNN put two stories recently on the TYT, one of which was a cop detaining a suspect and beating them up because they suspected them of smoking marijuana when it was just a fucking cigarette. Really? 
And then the cops suspected this other guy of selling it, smoking it, and he started running from the police. And as he was running, he stopped, put his hands in the air, and gave up. And they still, and they, he said something, and they pistol whipped him because they didn't like what they, he didn't, they, they didn't like what he had to say. The people who were on the scene are suspended with paid leave, but the person who pistol whipped the person, the cop pistol whipped the innocent victim here in this case, is on suspended leave with no pay. So, there are some fucked up shit going on. There is some fucked up shit, I should say, fucked up shit going on in our society right now. But at least there is some justice, nonetheless. You remember I talked about the shooting in North Casper. How the cops, even though they were being threatened by the person who was pulling the stupid shit, he had his gun out, he was aiming at the cops, he could have shot them, but they had their guns out, and... They gave him three warnings to drop your gun or we'll shoot. Three. He did not comply, he did not shoot, but he was warned, and he got shot. That is police protocol. Plain and simple. In some cases of the country, you're seeing cops just overreact and shoot first and ask questions later. So again, at least the cops in this town are doing their job right, in my opinion. I mean, shit, you hear about this crap on the news, and it makes cops look bad. Just like the Westboro Baptist Church makes Christians look bad. Just like when, um, you know, some idiot murders some people and when he's asked why, he says he did it because he loves Satan or some stupid shit like that just to create a scapegoat and keep the problem focused on religion. And it distracts people. That's why people like that do that. It's because it creates more stupidity. Plain and simple. I would say do your research on your religion before you go out bashing someone else's beliefs or trying to get them to convert or brainwash them or whatever you want to call it. But when you're spiritual and someone comes up to you and tries to shove the gospel in your face, the only gospel I want to read is the gospel of filth. Holding such book in your hands is something to behold. And you can tell a good Christian from a bad one is the man they try preaching it to you, you explain to them that no thank you, I'm spiritual. They say, Well, thank you for your time and leave. They're good Christians, you know. But if they sit there and it goes over there like this, Eeeom. okay, what you said it goes over their head like this, Eeeom. Like peanut from Jeff Dunham, okay, and they still continue to harass you with it, even though you said no. Bad Christian. And they've been saying that, oh, Jesus Christ is coming back for a second time. What is he going to pour out? Just kidding. No, but if he is, and he's going to supposedly kill all the infidels, according to some textures. What kind of fucked up shit is that, right? Well, the people making him look bad are going to be first, I guarantee it, if that is your uh, your case for uh, justifying your belief or whatever you want to call it. The way I see it, YouTube, all religion is the same in one aspect. It doesn't matter what system you pray to or believe in, you have a system in the last worship, worship or idolize or become a part of that system. You pray, you go to your mass, your meetings, whatever you want to call it. And you look towards your toward, blah, blah, you look towards your faith for comfort and spiritual guidance. Now, how is that any different? It doesn't matter what you worship. You could be a Buddhist, you could be a Christian. It doesn't really fucking matter because when you think about it on the core principle of the matter, it's still the same concept. It doesn't really matter what you believe in. Now even the atheists who say, I don't believe in anything, well you still have the word belief in, therefore it's still a belief system. The second or, or I should say the third step after beating the fever. Step one is never speak of the name. Step two is to admit you're jealous. You wish you had his money. You wish you had what he had. And you'd realize that if you had it, you wouldn't be a big douchebag about it. Step three is to ignore him completely. Just ignore his music. Just support your own music. And step four 
you have cured yourself of the fever. It is awesome. You know. And I was like a lot of you. I hated him. I denied him. You know, you know. The first step to recovery is admitting. Now I make the same argument that writing music for 14 year old girls is not challenging. Writing music that comes from your soul, if you even have one. <laughs> no, but seriously. We're like, <sighs> how you doing, YouTube? No, but seriously. <laughs> See, now I'm just messing with you, but think about this for a second. And yeah, you know what? It does kind of suck because there are bands like ACDC. They're in their 70s and their last album, Black Eyes, kicked ass. Black Sabbath came out with 13. When the Manson came out with a new album, Cradle of Filth came out with a new album. So there's still good music out there being produced. You know, it's just a matter of supporting you and ignoring the bands you don't like. But very common of jealous haters on YouTube. And general mass media is if they don't like something, they have to vulgarly discuss it on the comment section. You know, you, you're a black metal fan. You go into a Justin Bieber video. Oh, I said his name. God damn it. Well, who'd you think I was talking about, stupid? Regardless, you try to convince the fans that black metal is awesome, and it is. You know, there's no denying that. And his music sucks. He's a douchebag, and yada, yada, yada. But the diehard Justin Bieber fans are not going to be convinced, just like they're not going to convince you to like his music. So, what's the point of arguing about it? Sincerely, what is the absolute point of arguing about it? Their answer is, there is no point in arguing about it. This goes for both sides. Support what you like and ignore what you don't like. It makes life a whole lot easier on you and everyone else, because I'm sitting there watching a video of a band I like, and someone has to insult Justin Bieber in it. And it's like, really? He, this has nothing to do with the little shit, okay? <sighs> Two people I wish would die. Rush Limbaugh and Justin Bieber. I mean, Rush Limbaugh is... Now, my fan base is growing ever so slowly, but it's growing, and I get people who message me on Facebook, Hey man, I just discovered your videos, you're awesome. You know what I say? And I mean this, thank you for the support. Now, it wasn't Job Corps, Job Corps story, always fun. I was going into town for some checkup on a doctor's appointment, and the driver driving me from Job Corps campus to town was a Rush Limbaugh fan. He's sitting there chewing his sunflower seeds and I look at my iPod, it's about half dead. I'm like, I should have charged it. I'm like, all right, I'll, like, I'll save it. So I'm sitting there, just kind of we're chatting back and forth. You know, it's casual. It's nothing too serious, really. It's just, you know, casual, you know. He turns on the radio and he's listening to Rush Limbaugh. And there's miles upon miles upon miles of open country. And the scenery is very beautiful. It's covered in pine trees. It's all hilly. You know, it's in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Very picturesque. But the more I hear Rush Limbaugh, the angrier and angrier I'm getting. And the cherry on top of the bullshit cake was when a fan called him in. So it was a young fan, too. You know, young, young fan. This a couple years ago. He's like calling in saying... How he tells all his friends in the neighborhood what Rush Limbaugh says, and all his friends agree with him, and he's just sitting there basically kissing his ass, saying how right he is, and going on about that. Just Rush Limbaugh say thank you. He says, I know. I know I'm right. And people say, I have an ego. <laughs> I was literally, I wanted to rip someone's goddamn head off. I'm like, fuck it. I turn on Cradle of Filth for just six minutes to, to calm my ass down. He, it's like my well, Facebook post says, keep calm in Cradle of Filth. You know, saying, keep calm and listen to Cradle of Filth. Exactly. You know. Jesus is a cunt. <laughs> no. It's a funny shirt. You know, people got really offended with the Kent State University t shirt, of which four people died protesting the Vietnam War. And I decided to make fun of him making a Kent State t-shirt and covering it in blood with some stupid-ass designer company. And that was offensive because you're making fun of somebody's death. 
all the horrible shit in Christianity, and this isn't really being offensive because I'll explain this to you. It's Cradle of Filth, it's a band logo on top. Below it is a naked nun wearing a headpiece, and she's fingering herself. It says visceral masturbation. On the back it says Jesus is a cunt. Oh, some people got so goddamn offended by this shirt. Like, how dare you wear this offensive t-shirt? Rather than laughing at themselves and saying, oh, she's pleasuring herself with the teachings of Jesus. I get it. Ha ha. Tongue in cheek, right? No, they decided to get offended. And my argument to that is there are more offensive shirts out there. I mean, you're really going to get offended by someone calling your deity a cunt. Really? Wow. Proving my point, huh? The Kent State University t-shirt was way more offensive, in my opinion. And the sick part of it is, is that there's only one shirt made, and after they made it, they quickly apologized. And this is a shirt company who's been known for making offensive products with their clothing line before. There's only one available, and it's been sold on eBay. Really? That's the kind of thing you have to ask yourself. Is that something you want to brag about to your friends? Look what I bought on eBay. Hmm. Again, that's something to think about, you two. You know. And I'm not the only one out there that gets trolled on YouTube. I know this because there's a lot of us out there just trying to make videos and vlog to the public and bullshit. You know, I should get a t-shirt that says, I'm not crazy talking to myself, I'm vlogging. A lot of YouTubers would probably crack up at that joke, but, you know. But sometimes my opinions piss people off, and sometimes my opinions make you think. They made you think I accomplished something. How much time have I wasted? Almost 40 minutes. Well, I've kept you long enough. Thanks for listening. YouTube, King Cobra JFS with another video.